The Hammond Tota Port in Sri Lanka is close to one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. The port opened to great optimism in 2010, but has not been without controversy. Last year, Sri Lanka leased the port to China for 99 years in exchange for relief from mounting debt, an arrangement looked down with strong suspicions by India. So what are the current circumstances of the Hamantota port? How did it get there and how does it fit into the ongoing build-up of the foundation of China's Belt and Road Initiative? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined by His Excellency Karuna Sin, Kaudi Waku, Sri Lanka Ambassador to China in the first half. When we come back in the second half, we'll be joined by Mr. Ye Hailin, Chief Director of the Center of South Asia Studies from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Yang Rei. According to the agreement signed in July 2017, China Merchants Port Holdings is taking charge of the commercial and administrative management operations of the Hamman Tota Port, together with Sri Lanka Ports Authority, for 99 years, holding a 70% stake in the two joint ventures. Western media have accused China of using a debt trap to take over this Sri Lankan port for military purposes. On this issue, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Ranul Wickremesinghe, said in Parliament, the Chinese government never pressurized Sri Lanka on this matter. What the Chinese government wanted us to do was to get proposals from Chinese companies to run the port initially. The proposal from China Merchants Port was most beneficial for Sri Lanka. He also clarified that Hambantota Port won't be used for Chinese military activity as it is under the control of the Sri Lanka Navy. Welcome to Dialogue, Your Excellency. In recent years, not surprisingly, South Asia, or the Indian Ocean, has become front page stories one way or another. Sri Lanka is one of the uh, major business partners of China. But why has Kambantota Port become so controversial? It's controversial because it uh, involved two countries, and some people look at this issue on political angles, some looked at in the security angles, but as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, we looked at it as on economic angle. We wanted to develop this port, and finally it was done. And uh, then we found it, uh, we are not in a position to run it viable, uh, as a viable business project, because it was not generating sufficient income to pay back. Therefore, we had to go for a second best option. The best would have been run by ourselves, payback by ourselves, if we had enough businesses. But unfortunately, as uh, envisaged or as expected, uh, the businesses came into the port was not sufficient to manage by themselves. Therefore, uh, since this uh, project was funded by Exim Bank loan from China, we negotiated with the, or we informed with the, to the political leaders of Chinese government. And with the understanding, we decided to go for a joint venture to help both parties. Therefore, we have come to this option. That was the only option available uh, with the situation prevail since 2010. You would never ever question the imagination of the broad audiences the world over. With the conspiracy theory going on in media reports, um, it seems some would love to compare Hambantota to the lease of Hong Kong to the British Empire uh, more than one century and a half ago after the Opium War. Now, is it appropriate to draw such a parallel comparison? Yes, uh, now these are subjective matters. People can analyze in a different ways. In fact, even this same example, uh, I told some of our people in a different way. I am aware that after the Opium War, the Chinese uh, political leadership at that time were not happy to, were reluctant to hand over, but the situation compelled them to do it. You know, Hong Kong was handed over to the British Empire 
under the gunboat policy yes. of yes. A, as a colony. As a colony. That's correct. But the blessing in disguise was finally when China opened it up, or nearly 50% of foreign investment came to mainland China from Hong Kong. So, of course, uh, in case of Hamban Total, they, they will, we, we, have, we have not given any right to uh, manage or administer Hamban Total surrounding areas. There is, it is impossible to compare Hong Kong and Hamban Total. In case of Hamban Total, we have given the right to manage the port and to manage the surrounding industrial park again subject to local regulations. Are you suggesting that the sovereignty of the Hambantota port will not be undermined as a result of the lease or the co-management with the Chinese authorities? Uh, sovereignty of any country is non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. no, maybe China, maybe India, maybe any other country. Now since we regain our independence in 1948, as a nation... One year earlier than the founding of the PRC. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. And um, I would like to say, same time, we were the first South Asian country to recognize People's Republic of China. So that the determination on that day of our founding leaders not to allow anybody to take over our sovereignty hereafter. Even we had a very uh, painful civil war, almost 30 years, to protect our territorial integrity. These are non-negotiable. So, but uh, excuse me, Mr. Ambassador, the Indian press loves uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, with the growing presence of the Chinese business stakes or our navy in the Indian Ocean, has security matters surrounding the Hambantota port start to capture headlines? How do you respond to their concerns? Because India is obviously a regional power no one can afford to ignore their security concerns. Of course, when you mention about the Indian press, it is not necessarily the view of the government of India. In the media, the media, members of the media community, they have their own way of speculation to promote their media uh, entities. That's a different story. But I would like to say, in case of security is concerned, it's entirely 100% is a matter for Sri Lankan government. Within the port or within our uh, sea zone, that means up to 200 miles from our sea shore, it's a matter for Sri Lanka. It's very clearly we have indicated. Uh, the investor has well understood it. I do not think we, not, we have to give much consideration on this speculation. Uh, whenever, of course, something is happening, they have their own views, own versions, own speculation. Not only Indian media, even I know within our, within Sri Lanka, within Sri Lanka, uh, different people are giving uh, different interpretation. Is that because of the bipartisan politics, given the uniqueness of the Chinese political institutions? I'm afraid Chinese businessmen or investors uh, will be left increasingly disoriented by local politics, particularly electoral politics yes, in the host country. So do you think this context matters more for prospective Chinese investors? Yeah, that is the unfortunate price we have to pay for our so-called democracy. Now the, the most of the opposition for this deal came, came from an opposition group. We don't question uh, the benefits or integrity of democracy. Yes. That's not our job. Yes. Our job is about the legitimate concerns of Chinese investors. If our investment is always and constantly subject to political risks and legal risks due to the bipartisan wrangling, that would be a liability that no Chinese investors can afford to, uh, you know, to ignore. Natural, because any investor, whether it's a private or a government entity, they would like to protect it, they would like to get the, their, their return they expect, if the security is marked there. Of course, I would like to say, under our constitution, uh, Article 154 has very given very clear guarantee that it will be protected. 
uh, not only Chinese investors, for any investor we would like Except to Except for the issue of corruption. That's a very tricky issue, yes. isn't it? That's correct. In case of corruption, of course, that's the reason issue it, it has emerged. Uh, when you do business, uh, these allegations are natural. Uh, corrupt politicians, corrupt business deals are all over the world. It's not only to unique to Sri Lanka or to any other country. But the most important thing as a government of Sri Lanka, in case of uh, this port, the government of China, both government will not tolerate any sort of corruption. So the last three years I have... There's no question about the zero tolerance for corruption in whatever political system. Yes. The next issue, which has aroused much of the media attention and the world attention, is the alleged death trap. Now, it seems your country has borrowed more from the United States than from China, and yet the Western media has created a strong impression that China is the most impressive data. No, I don't think that statement is correct by given by former governor of the Central Bank. We have, we have not taken bilateral loan from the United States more than from China. Maybe some private investors who have come and invested in portfolio so through uh, uh, collaborating with the bond issue. The you mean China is the biggest investor? China is, a, for now the last two years China is the biggest investor. But before that one time it was Japan was the l largest investor. But we have taken more uh, loans from the multilateral organizations such as the World Bank, the IMF, the ADB. And uh, of course it's a mixed bag. But then what about the Belt and the Road Initiative? Uh, Indians have good reasons to question the prosperity of the Belt and Road Initiative, although they see eye to eye with the general principle that aims at co-prosperity. But what do you think of their concerns? Uh, of course, Indians have their own reason because of this. Uh, one of their claims is that uh, uh, this Pakistan uh, economic corridor will be passing through the disputed territories. But otherwise, even now, AIIB is a part of the Belt and Road Initiative. And India joined the in AIIB. India, not only India joined, even one of the vice president, even recently, I met him. He is very actively taking part. As the special envoy of your government, uh, the ambassador, what do you think of uh, the way Sri Lanka government positions itself in the triangle relationship, Sri Lanka, India, and China? How important is China in your foreign policy? Because China is the now uh, the largest economy in Asia and second largest economy in the world. Uh, for us, uh, India also, Indian economy also very important. Similarly, the Chinese economic cooperation in the field of trade, investment and tourism is very vital for us. So therefore, we have to balance it and uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the political leadership level with the Prime Minister of Persian and they have understood it. Maybe in different levels, uh, but media and others are making different interpretation. But I, as far as I know, this has not become a, a bilateral issue or a regional issue. It has not taken up any of these forums. So India has understood why we need China. China has uh, realized why we need to work with India. In fact, now I'm very happy that in the recent past, last few months we see that uh, the uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping meeting very often and understanding and uh, working together. So we feel that emerging situation will be very favorable for us as a third party between these two countries. Are you optimistic that China will play a constructive role in maintaining co-prosperity and stability in the Indian Ocean? Because we have set up a, a Djibouti military base, yes, and that has also con that has also caused strong worries and concerns from uh, Indian friends. Yes, we I'm uh, I'm aware that the Djibouti military force is the one reason even some of the people thinking that whether China will try to use even Hamad for that kind of thing. That's why at the very beginning the government of Sri Lanka, of course, there was no request from China at all at the beginning or now, I don't know, in the future, to have a military base in Sri Lanka. But we made it very clear, because people were speculating, particularly the media. Therefore, we made it very clear, at the, before the agreement was signed, 
the security is a matter for Sri Lanka. We don't want to have any misunderstanding in the future. I do not think even China will make a such a request. So far they have not made any request. And even if there will be a request, we will not agree to that. But China has understood it. But will it come as a surprise if our Navy decides to pay a port call? Of course, now port calls and joint military exercises are part of the game. Now, it, it does, even now. Uh, if it will not create any suspicion to anybody, if it will not create any, uh, say, any other political issues, we, we may consider those things, but next, very seriously, uh, as a first option, Sri Lanka has understood we have our obligation to our neighborhood. We can't keep them have any suspicions. So we have to live within South Asia. Thank you very much for your participation and your effort to clarify some of the myths that was raised by the regional media in the Indian Ocean. You are watching dialogue with His Excellency Mr. Karuna Sin Kodi Tuwaku, the Sri Lanka Ambassador to China. When we come back, we'll be joined by Mr. Yahailin, an expert of uh, South Asian studies. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. In the second half, I'm very happy to be joined here by Mr. Yehailin, Chief Director of the Center of South Asia Studies from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Welcome to the dialogue, sir. I was discussing with the Ambassador of Sri Lanka issues concerning security of Hambantota as well as uh, the alleged death trap, mm -hmm. uh, which has a lot to do with the initiative uh, of Belt and Road. I mean, that has caused a lot of uh, outcry from the world media, yeah. particularly that from the West. So what do you think of uh, controversies of Hamatota? Actually, uh, not the two major issues. One is the security, but it is very clear that according to the uh, Sri Lanka government, the, all the security issues were totally responsible by Sri Lanka authority. It will, there's no doubt. So Chinese Navy, Chinese Armed Forces, won't send any even a soldier or sailor to Hamantota. That's for sure. So militarized, don't need to worry about it. But for the debt, I think in the perspective of the Chinese companies and Chinese government, we have to more concern on the financial risk. Yeah, according to the Western media, they are more concerned the debt of the Sri Lanka government and the Sri Lanka people. But for China, we have to concern such kind of a big co company project the highly financial risk will, will totally covered by the Chinese company. So it's not a competition or not just a game. We have to think about it. Chinese company got this port, got this project, so they have to be responsible for everything. You mean it's not all the agreements that have yeah, been reached it's between based the two on sides this are principle. based on yeah. the spirit of a You contract. take this uh, debt, you take this risk. So this is for sure. It not only China is a kind of a bully, okay, we take the project from the Sri Lanka government and then Sri Lanka government will still suffer from the debt of financial risk. It's not like this. Well, uh, world media not only keep their eyes on Hamatuta, but also the proposed high-speed railway, one of the uh, three mega projects in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, with the campaign success of um, Dr. Mahadia. Uh, his party and particularly himself decide to re-examine uh, the legitimacy and the uh, feasibility of uh, their high-speed railway. So do you think this is a, a result of the local electoral politics uh, surrounding the issue of corruption? Okay, we can see this uh, in two aspects. Firstly, uh, yes, the domestic election do bring some impact to the cooperation project between China and the host country, such as in Malaysia, such as in Sri Lanka in the 2015, uh, the uh, Kuala Lumpur port, the phase two, faced the same problem, very similar. But we're also thinking in another way, just to go back to the evidence of the, 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 the project of the Kuala Lumpur phase two. After one year suspension, and they restart. It's because of the domestic election caused a political impact, but after a certain while, the governments, local governments, still had to think about the economy issue, and then the things could go back down the rail. So that's the, that's the issue ha already happening in Sri Lanka, and we know the premier of the Malaysia, Mahadeo, will come to Beijing very soon, just a, within what's a couple behind, of days. What's behind the current crusade against mm. the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, particularly Western media showed tremendous interest yeah. in the alleged 
death trap issue. In a good way, positive way, we should think there's uh, something probably only because of the misunderstanding or lack of information we had to admit it. And also, based on their own license, they, they, they kind of bring some remand or the reference to the Chinese company. That's for positive way. But we had to admit there's some negative. Also, based on some bias or some uh, conspiracy theory, they just want to blockade or set some obstacle for the such kind of cooperation. Two ways, we can't deny any of them. You know, I've been to the annual event of uh, Shangri-La Security Dialogue in Singapore. Mm -hmm. One senior representative of uh, IISS, the organizational agency, mm -hmm. said to me, Ray, what do you think of the geopolitical conspiracy arising from the Belt and Road Initiative? They say China not only exports overcapacity of our infrastructure, but our values, our thoughts on global governance, posing a serious challenge to Western institutions and even, even their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. are you surprised by such allegations? Of course I'm not surprised. I, I've been to several occasions just like you and actually I was questioned by many times. <laughs> but, for, but the thing is that, yeah, if we say the BRI or the Chinese rising will cause some impact to the so-called Western style, that's for sure. We can't deny that. Yes, because of the Western style is not so perfect. If they are so perfect, perfect, they won't leave any room for the China's Chinese style. So that's what, for one thing. And secondly, we have to say that it's overreading such kind of impact, all mm -hmm. the all the incarcerate such kind of impact. China still only focusing on the economy, far away from the similar behavior conducted by the Western countries in 19th century or 20, early years of the 20th century, so far away. The, what you say about the vulnerability and, and the flawed uh, Western style in their overseas assistance uh, 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 does make some sense. However, w let's take a second look. Mm -hmm. How do you characterize uh, the Western assistance or investment? Uh, some uh, experts of African studies uh, came here to my program and said, Ray, their problem is that they always attach strings, mm -hmm. no. uh, preconditions, sure. uh, not only from IMF and World Bank. I'm not sure about ADB, uh, Asia Development Bank. Yes, they do the same. They do the same. They do the same. Uh, can you say more to clarify uh, some of the myths about the success of a Western assistance? And I investment? think the conditions attached to some agreements, I, I Okay. We, we can't say this uh, definitely with attached about uh, attached to the political uh, conditions. If we, we, say, we say that some project in the African in sub subcontinent they will attach to some political uh, t political conditions or preconditions, China def definitely will against uh, such kind of the style. The Western, the Western style. media say yeah. loud and clear that the many African governments are corrupt hopelessly, and therefore without uh, intervention uh, they're going to expect. Uh, high political and legal risks. Who told them, who, who teach them to be corrupted? Actually, the African country also learn something, a lot of things from the Western countries. So, uh, legal uh, condition. Uh, uh, yeah. Government officials in many African governments uh, receive elite education in European yeah, countries. Yeah, so that's, that's for sure. But, they, so that's but then the Western countries call for good governance, and rule, also of law, rule of law. In the 1970s, such kind of political conditions is the reason, or we can say it's a root of the cor corruption in Africa, because they can easily get money from the Western Bank and then do their illegal, li I even immoral activities against their own people. This happened. So we can't say all the preconditions from the Western, condition, Western country is clean. But for China, I think the legal conditions... Are we perfect? Uh, no, of course. So, in my understanding, of course, uh, yes or no? Of course, we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. We are the newcomers. Newcomers will nev never be the perfect. But in my understanding, is that the legal conditions are attached to the project. Yes, for sure. We we need that because to maintain the uh, anti-corruption uh, mainstream of the in the project in the African country. That's for sure. Secondly, the economy precondition or business precondition. That's also for sure. We need to ensure our safety, the safety of our investment. So I, I, I won't call on the zero conditions, but I only say that the political or even the non-business preconditions is something beyond the, the agreements. I should be against it. And China never reads such a condition. So define the condition is quite important. What kind of conditions they are talking about? Do you think Indian concerns have been 
or are being reduced step by step, quietly, except for the noise of the Indian press. Politicians in India may become more reasonable uh, uh, in, in their examination of the Hamadut report. Based on my own observation, I think we still could hold some patient to carefully observe not the yet. Indian. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. They still need some time. Uh, some time. But uh, we should, we do recognize that we do see that the voice is lower. Mm -hmm. No, it's a good start, but uh, to have a happy end, I think it's far away. Let's take a second look at the security matters. Um, for years, Indians talk about the pole conspiracy theory mm -hmm. along the coastline of the yeah. Indian Ocean. Now, with the introduction of the Indo-Pacific strategy, uh, people, however, listened very carefully to what Prime Minister Modi said at the reception uh, uh, of the Cinderella Dialogue. Uh, he said China should be an integral part mm. of the Indo-Pacific strategy uh, and this strategy must be inclusive. Mm. What did he mean? I think we are very happy to see that because the Indian didn't choose the side with America, Australia and Japan. They didn't pick up the side. Still, India hold their tradition uh, the, the tradition of their diplomacy to have neutralized their position. So that's a good sign. And also, I think in the open forum for the Indian Pacific, China could, could participate. China not necessarily against the Indian Pacific concept. China is only again opposed the such kind of a concept is try to block it, China. It's mm -hmm. different. Right. Okay, so uh, w what do you think of the subtle position of the Sri Lanka government mm -hmm. between India and China? Obviously, India has long been a dominant regional power in South Asia. And China assisted the Sri Lanka government in the war against the Ta yeah. Tamil Tiger successfully. Uh, yeah. uh, it seems this time around China mm -hmm. comes in time again. Mm -hmm. A friendly need is a friendly yeah, need. Course, However, yeah. Indians uh, may follow this event with some degree of uneasiness. Yeah. I think for China, we are fine with the Indians at the least uh, airport just very close to the Hamantau airport. The least uh, airport called the 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 the, the, the uh, this, uh, this, uh, I, I won't say this uh, efficient or non-efficient airport, but they do have a huge project. China is fine with that. I hope India will fine with the Hamantota and the Kuala Lumpur port. So it's the same. We are the these two regional giant. It try to assist, provide some assistance to Sri Lanka. So they could be the partners, not only the necessary competitors, or even the rivals. Very quickly, how do you assess the importance of the two? major ports in the Indian Ocean. One is the Hamadutta, the other Gwadar, a deep water port of Pakistan. And it seems Indians feel that they are being I won't say this is a very important port because they are the only new but port. But they are part of the uh, yeah. maritime Silk Road. So that means there's still a long way to the sea. And currently, Gwadar port, Hamadutta port is only newcomers. They don't, they don't really compete against the existing port already in the Indian Ocean. So we need to give them some time to prove themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I won't say they will necessarily be against the Indian interest or maintain the situation or, or something like this. Just uh, time will prove the everything. So time, uh, 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 so time is on our side. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. 99 years. Thank you so much, Mr. Ye, for your very insightful analysis about the uh, regional situation in the Indian Ocean, particularly the Hambantota port. And I hope you would have a better understanding about the Indian Ocean and Indo-Pacific strategy. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.